you for the next 20 minutes telling you how you can save your planet right from your own home. So I want to thank Lizzie Daly for inviting me to take part in Earth Lessons Live. Like you, I am stuck at home with my family and we're looking for things to do and we're looking to learn new things. So I hope we can give you some ideas around all of that today. So as I say, I'm Dr. Tara Shine. I'm an environmental scientist. So that means I'm interested in us, the people, and how we live on planet Earth. Um, and what I'm going to do today is look at some everyday objects that you have in your house and what will print right from within the confines of your own four walls. Um, I am the director of Change by Degrees. That's our company um, with Madeleine Murray. We're based down here in Kinsale in County Cork in Ireland. So hi to everybody watching from Kinsale. I also present wildlife documentaries on TV and in April. So I'll tell you more about that in a moment. Please interact with us on the chats. I have Lauren, my able assistant here, who's going to read them out for me. So let us know where you're joining from. Um, I'm going to ask you several places for suggestions. Um, if you have questions, let us know. We want to interact with you as much as we can. So hi to find solutions to climate change and biodiversity. So creating the laws and the rules at the international level that govern what all countries do. But I have always believed within all of that, of the power of the individual, about what we can do and the power that we have in making a difference as well. And so I think that we see that right now in terms also of the COVID-19 crisis. So while it's up to governments to create the rules around how we live and what we can do, they don't work if we don't play our part as individuals, if we don't change our behaviour. So, for example, they set the rules that we can't go outside. So it's up to us then to change our behaviour and stay at home and, and practice social distancing. And when we do that, that's when we get real change. And it emissions societies by 2050. But none of that will work if we aren't reducing our carbon footprint at home in our own lives. So we might need to walk or take our bike instead of the car, eat local seasonal food, and reduce our emissions in our homes. Those are all things we can do. So there's lots more comments coming in. Thank you. Oh, you hopefully today with some scientific facts that you didn't know. I want to help you to see what action you can take. And then I want to encourage you to tell your story, to spread the word. You can also follow Change by Degrees on Instagram, on Facebook, and on Twitter. And um, so even after today, come back, talk to us. We've got a new campaign starting next week on things you can do at home. So stay involved with us. Okay. Five everyday objects we're going to talk about now. We're going to talk about toilet paper. We're going to talk about plant pots. We're going to talk about jeans, soap, and water bottles. So I think these are things most of you should have in your house. Okay. So first of all, toilet paper. The obsession with toilet paper goes on. Okay. Um, no wonder. Did you know that people use on average 57 sheets of toilet roll every day? I think that seems like an awful lot. That equates to about 84 million rolls of toilet paper used around the world every day. And that is a lot of trees. So toilet paper is one of the reasons why we're losing the equivalent of 27 football pitches of forests every minute. So everything we can do to reduce our toilet paper. Thank you. How are you doing, Niall and Emer? Um, so what can we do about, what else can we do about toilet roll and paper and reducing our environmental footprint? Well, to make paper requires a, a lot of trees, but also a lot of water and a lot of energy. So if we want to reduce water pollution and reduce carbon emissions that cause climate change, every little bit of paper we use less is a good thing. So we could try using less toilet paper, count the squares maybe, see if you come in less than 57, let me know how you get on, okay? Um, and the other things are, have a look at what toilet paper is in your house. So this is regular toilet paper we have in our house, but it is FSC certified. Do you know what that means? Forest Stewardship, oh, it's hard to say, Forest Stewardship Council certified. That means that this was from a sustainably grown tree. So when that tree was cut down, another tree was planted. But it is bleached white and it is virgin paper, so not recycled. This one is recycled paper and it's not bleached, so it's a sort of off-brown colour and it's made from old Tetra Packs. Yeah, the kind of things orange juice comes in. Um, this one I think is perfectly good. My family think is a little bit scratchy. Maybe try some out and see what you think. And the favourite in our house is bamboo paper. So bamboo is a plant, obviously. It grows 30% faster than trees and absorbs 35% more carbon dioxide than trees. And we find that we don't need to use that much of it and it is nice and soft. So have a look at what toilet paper you have in your house. Look at the packaging, see what it's telling you. And make sure then that you recycle the inserts. Um, so the inserts are cardboard, make sure they go in your recycling bin or think about things you can do to reuse them. So this is your challenge for today. 
what can you do with an old toilet roll insert? So what we've done, because we have been planting at the moment, is we've planted our little seedlings inside our toilet roll insert. You don't even need to fold down the bottom. And then when the little plant is ready for planting out, you just stick the whole thing in the ground and it composts down. Okay, so uh, have a look at that. Lauren, do you want to tell me something from the chat? No? Okay, we'll keep going. So, so that's one thing you can do with them. What else might you do with them? You might make a telescope. Uh, you might make turrets on your castle. Tell us some of the things that you're doing with your toilet room inserts. If we can reuse them before we recycle them, that's a good thing. Yep. Yeah? Um, next thing we're going to talk about then, because we're on the subject of planting. Plastic is designed to last hundreds of years. And most planting, uh, plant plots are only used for a short while uh, before they, because they, the plant is put in there, the seedling to grow. It goes to the shop, you bring it home, you plant it, and then we don't need it anymore. Um, some of these plant pots can't be recycled also because they're black plastic. So they can't be distinguished from the conveyor belt in the recycling company. And so they don't get recycled, which is sad. Now, that means that you can, can find on the market compostable plant pots. But you know what they're made of? They're made from peat, the same stuff that we make peat moss from, which is what most compost around the world is made from. Okay, And peat moss comes from peat bogs. And peat bogs are one of the most beautiful habitats in the world. They are home to amazing organisms like, um, like uh, Lauren, you're distracting me. Uh, they're made from amazing organisms like plants that are carnivorous that eat insects. And they also are home to beautiful amphibians like newts. So it makes no sense to dig up our peat bogs to make compostable plant pots or compost for our gardens. We need to keep them. We also need to keep them because they are amazing stores of carbon. Oh my goodness, they store carbons from millions and millions of years ago. And we, when we dig that up just to put us on our, on our gardens, it creates, it contributes to climate change. So what we've been doing instead of compostable plant pots is we've been using egg boxes. And in our egg boxes, we have planted some beetroot, which is already starting to sprout in peat-free compost. So you can either make your own peat free compost if you have a composter, or did you know that your weight, your food waste bin, your brown bin, when that gets taken away, it gets taken to an industrial composter, and in 12 weeks, that food waste breaks down into compost. Yep. So this is one thing we can do. So Lauren, um, come and tell me. So let us know what you've done with your toilet inserts and egg boxes. Good suggestion. Let us know. Have what ideas? You're eating a lot of eggs at the moment. What are you turning your egg boxes into? What else are you doing with your inserts? And Lauren, then I'll need your help to read out to me some of the suggestions that people have. Okay. So one object done, two. We've done toilet rolls and we've done plant pots. Now we're going to talk about soap. We are all washing our hands nonstop at the moment. Okay, it's a really important part of staying safe. So in our house, we have some liquid soap in a container that we refill, um, and we have some bar soap. Did you know that it uses five times more energy to make liquid soap than bar soap? And it takes 20 times more energy to make the packaging that we use for liquid soap than it does for bar soap. So the plain old bar of soap is really important. So there's hardly any packaging, um, and it lasts a long time, and it tends to be cheaper. Okay, so if you have liquid soap, see if you can find a refill place where you can buy a big container and refill your containers. That way, if you're like us, the same container you can use for years and years and years. And if you've gone for bar soap and you now can get bar soap to wash your hands with, your face, you can get shampoo and conditioner in bars. We have been reminded by my sister last week and one of her friends, Caroline, of a great trick, which is to put a bottle cap in the bottom of your soap so that your bar of soap doesn't go soggy. So even if you don't have a soap tray, this works. Because look, you put it down on the ground or on a surface and it stays up above, out of the water so it's not getting soggy on the bottom. I had completely forgotten about this. This is the kind of thing if you ask your granny and granddad, they will know. So there's an idea of something to do, you can do it. So if you're absolutely bored out of your mind, look online and there are lots of tips on how you can and melt down the ends of lots of little bars of soap to make a new bar of soap. So if you really, really have lots of time in your hands, you could give that one a go, okay? So let me see what I can read here. A question from Owen O'Riordan. Can you recycle cans you can't find, you find in the shed? Cans or, 
cans you find in the street. Penny recycled cans you find in the street. So normally I would say pick up everything you find in the street and take it home. But I do realize that people are having to be extra careful about that right now. So right now I wouldn't be picking up anything off the street unless I was wearing gloves. And I went home and put that in my recycling and then washed my hands really well before I went any further. In your pajamas. Um, in your pajamas? All right, well, I got dressed because I was going to talk to you guys all live today. Uh, and if you are dressed, the chances are you are wearing a pair of jeans. Jeans are the most popular and most common item of clothing worn in the industrialized world. More than any other item of clothing, people are likely to own jeans. Have you added up how many pairs of jeans you own, for example? Um, so jeans actually have a very big carbon footprint. So each pair of jeans takes about 4,000 liters of water to make. That's from growing the carbon, growing the cotton to make them, to dyeing them, um, producing them, transporting them, and then the washing of them and the drying of them when you own them. Actually, this is quite staggering. Of the carbon footprint of a pair of jeans, 37% of it is due to the washing and drying of the jeans that we do. Okay, 37%. So when you change... When you uh, wash your jeans less, you have a massive impact on their carbon footprint. Um, Lauren, you're gonna to have to tell me what you have to say. Oh, Ross and Tommy, Ali and Patrick are watching, Naomi and Dunnick are watching, Max and Sandy Boundy are watching. Thank you guys. Right, back to the jeans. So if you're not in your pajamas and you're wearing your jeans, what can you do to reduce their carbon footprint? Number one, wash them less. So the guideline is wash them once in every 10 wears, okay? Um, so that's pretty good. And then a keep outside to dry rather than putting them in the tumble dryer. Then you use less energy and you produce fewer greenhouse gas emissions. Um, another thing we can do, obviously, is own fewer pairs of jeans and buy less clothes. Yeah, Lots of us, perhaps us mums in particular, tend to buy too many clothes. So what if we bought fewer clothes and instead we repaired the ones we have? So maybe you're not wearing a pair of jeans because they're missing a button. Well, there's no excuse at the moment. You have nothing going on. You could go and get out your sewing kit and sew on a button. Or maybe they need a patch. These jeans were patched here on the bum and this got them another bit of life. But now these jeans are really almost at the end of their life. They've got a big hole in the knee. And so I can think about how I can reuse them. So as it's going to be summer any moment now, my plan is to have jeans last also the less it's carbon footprint. And um, now, if you're really good at sewing and you have a sewing machine, I also suggest that you go online because there you can find patterns to turn your old jeans into skirts or to turn it into a bag if you're really creative. So there's all kinds of things you can do there. Has anyone here ever turned a pair of jeans into a pair of shorts, a skirt, something more exotic? Let me see what you say. Oh, people are liking the tips, that's good. We give our egg cartons back to the egg man, excellent. Um, Rachel's watching, good to see you, Rachel. Um, loads of eggs boxes. Thanks for the soap tip. I love the soap tip. It's the simple things in life, isn't it? Liam and Rory, I see you, Gino and Karen. Rory, I think it was your birthday yesterday. Happy birthday. Okay, the other thing about jeans that you may not know is that, you know, that all denim jean is blue. And you know what makes it blue? It's a dye called indigo. And there's a lot of indigo used in making jeans. Um, and it can cause a lot of water pollution if it's not correctly controlled. And that kills the animals that live in the, in the water, but it's also bad for the health of the people that live near the factory. And so new techniques are being created all the time that use less indigo and less water in the making of jeans. So whenever you do get back out to the shops again, and if you're buying a new pair of jeans, ask lots of questions. See if the company that makes your jeans are sustainable, see if they have something to tell you about the techniques they use in dyeing, how much water goes into making the jeans. The key thing to being a scientist is to be curious and ask questions. So before we buy anything, we should always ask questions. Where did it come from? Who made it? How was it made? What impact had it got on the environment? If we all as consumers ask those questions, we have really got a power to change a lot. Okay, it's because you're probably like us in our house and you're now completely used to bringing a reusable water bottle to school or to work, okay? Well, what's interesting at the moment is because we're all at home, we're not packing up our water bottles like we were, but we're also home more, and we might notice what else is coming into our house in plastic bottles. So orange juice, apple juice might be coming in in plastic bottles. Milk quite often comes in plastic containers. 
So are we making sure that all of these containers are, first of all, getting recycled? So they have to go clean, dry and loose into our recycling bins. Um, but also, like anything, if we can reuse these objects before they become rubbish or have to be recycled, that's great. So one important fact about plastic bottles is, did you know that they are in the top three items found as marine pollution? So when people do beach cleans and clean up our oceans, they find plastic bottles are in the top three. Number one is cigarette butts. Number two is wrappers from food. And number three are plastic bottles. And when these plastic bottles go into the ocean, they, the action of the ocean breaks them down into smaller pieces called microplastics. And those microplastics look just like food for the wildlife because that makes their tummies feel full and then they stop eating. And that's really, really dangerous for them. Um, but it's also not good for us because if you have fish for dinner and that fish has eaten plastic, then you're eating plastic too. Um, so that's not a good idea. So what we can do is refuse plastic bottles like you can do by not buying, bringing water bottles to school, but also make sure that we reuse and recycle the plastic bottles that come into our house. So here's some ideas we have and we'd love to hear more from you. A liter bottle equals one kilogram of weight. And so you don't need anything fancy. We now have our dumbbells here made out of two old juice bottles. That's one thing you could try. This one we love because we were talking to you about the fact that we were gardening. This is an old milk bottle and we've turned it into a scoop so we can use it for digging the garden or getting the compost um, out of the compost bag. Yeah, and obviously we only buy peat-free compost, yeah? Make sure you ask the next time you go shopping for compost. Another thing that is fun to do, look it up online, is to turn your water bottles into a bird feeder. There are lots of birds at the moment um, in our garden, so it's good to encourage them. So guys, that's my five objects, okay? Thanks for interacting. Please, Join us, Change by Degrees, on Instagram, on Facebook, and on Twitter. Get involved. Look out for How to Save Your Planet, One Object at a Time. It goes on sale um, in online shops on the 16th of April. So please buy it. There's heaps more hints and tips and things you can do in there. Next week on Change by Degrees, we are going to launch a How to Save Your Hot Air Planet from Your Home campaign. We'll have three challenges a week for you to get involved in. So get in, so come and join in with that. And make sure people are telling me where we can source stuff. So look in your local, in your local area. There's lots and lots we can find. So thank you, Lizzie, for having me on. Thank you all for joining. Share, get in touch with us on Change by Degrees. I'd love to hear more from you all. And thanks for tuning in today. Bye-bye. Is it all the scores are That's what I was trying to get you to do. <laughs> oh my God, you're so strong.